Hey everyone, just gonna wait till uh, we have critical mass here and then we'll get started. CT, um, you might want to rename yourself. <laughs> okay. Is that or start talking differently? All right, got about 50 people so far, which sounds with uh, partners, sounds pretty close to quorum. So um, let's get started. So our, uh, our agenda today, we'll have um, you know, opening words uh, from Reverend Joanna. Uh, we'll vote on our elections. That's the main um, kind of topic of this, of the main meeting. You know, just to, for some background, remember we have two meetings a year, <clears throat> one in May for officer elections and one in December for budget mostly. Uh, we'll get a budget update, kind of check in on how we're doing. Um, we'll have a capital fund update of the projects that we accomplished this year. And we'll vote on one additional project for, the, for this year. We'll talk about kind of our plans for uh, in-person church and um, introduce an engagement or reintroduce our engagement survey and then talk about how we're going to vote um, for for the elections and the and the voting items so reverend joanna let me hand it over to you for some opening words okay and i uh can't seem to start my video here um, but let me give you the words. This is by Alice Anasheka Nassiman. In a time of uncertainty, when everything around us is changing constantly, each day new developments, rising numbers, changing guidelines, when the world we live in suddenly seems upside down and topsy-turvy, we light our chalice to remind ourselves of our grounding in our faith. We remember that the flaming chalice came into being as a beacon of hope during World War II, a secret symbol that offered help. In the midst of it all, we wrap ourselves in the warm light of a familiar flame, a reminder of the strength that emerges when we come together in community. Thank you very much. All right, so just some um... Um, housekeeping here uh, to be unmuted, um, ask a question in the chat. We have some um, kind of moderators, the co-board members and, and folks are standing by to field your question in the chat and um, you know talk about it uh, online. Or if you want to ask it uh, with your voice, then we can unmute you. Um, if you're really having issues and, and need help, um, or, you know, you have, um, you know, questions that you can't seem to get in the chat or whatever, then you can text me or Christopher. Um, so just to re reminder that our, um, we have, all right, some technical challenges here. <laughs> I can't see my video preview, so. Uh, Okay, um, so Linda McCullough is uh, carrying on her second half 
Uh, she's a midterm trustee, so we're not voting for her, but just a reminder that she is still on the board. And uh, our first voting item uh, is going to be the nominating committee. And just as a reminder, the nominating committee uh, serves to put forward members to serve on the board and, and the nominating committee. Um, and it's sort of a, a check and balance to our system of um, our governance so that you know, the board members aren't appointing other board members and that sort of thing. Um, so it's uh, a, I believe, two-year term, and it's currently chaired by Julia Mitchkey. And we're actually looking for a third. Um, we don't have a nominee for a third spot here. Um, so if uh, if you're willing to serve, or if you you know want to, um, we're taking basically nominations from the floor um, for this um, this position. Um, so in the in the voting like in the ballot, there's currently a TBD on here. Um, so if you're willing to serve, then put your name in the chat or or you know do something there. But Mark Anderson is uh, running, Julia Mitchkey is running. So we'll circle back to that. Okay, um, trustees to the board are two-year terms. Um, it, it's called at-large trustees, right? It's, um, we have uh, four officer positions on the board, president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, and uh, three trustee positions. And um, Darius Long, and Giles Hampton are um, running for trustee. Um, assistant treasurers. So assistant treasurers are the people who um, do our income bookkeeping. They keep track of pledges and um, uh, mostly pledge attribution and, and that sort of income. Uh, it's a two-year term as well. Um, Barbara Coldiron is is uh, running, and Nick Pritchard is uh, running for a second term. So he's served one two years term, and our bylaws prohibit more than two consecutive terms. Um, but for continuity, then he's staying on for a second term as well. All right, um, treasurer running for treasurer is Jennifer Hale, and the treasurer role. Um, is uh, kind of the financial um, uh, representation on the board, you know, um, kind of had the budget um, discussions and are the liaison to the East Finance Committee. Um, there's some some work being done there to organize our, our finance um, kind of operations a bit differently. So Jennifer has an important role next year on that. This is a one-year term, and um, but typically people serve two years. And secretary Liz Waters will be serving the, or is running for secretary. Um, and secretary's kind of job is the um, historian or record keeper of the board. Um, so they'll take minutes and uh, in both the congregational meetings and in the, the board meetings. Um, Vice President Amy Dark is running for this position. Um, Vice President's main jobs are the congregational meeting um, and the um, kind of organizing that, putting that together and presenting it, and um, also as sort of a backup to the president. And uh, me, CT Goss, I'm running for president this year. And, um, and historically, the all the officer positions, they are one-year terms, terms, but they are two-year sort of unofficial, you know, recommended that people um, kind of hang on for that, that second year as well. Um, I also did want to thank our outgoing um, board. Um, Marie Mulling has served two, two years as trustee. Thank her. Rachel Sarton has served two years as president, and then previous to that, two years as vice president. She's done a, a great job in really organizing our, our board and um, kind of modernizing some of our practices. We thank her. Christopher Carroll has served um, 
I believe two years as secretary and then pr prior to that two years as trustee. So um, he's done a great job in capturing the conversation and capturing the feeling of, of our meeting. So we really thank him. Um, and Doug Martin uh, served as a, a partial year as, as treasurer this year. Um, we thank him for his service as well. Um, all right. So if there are any, um, any nominations from the floor for those positions, I encourage you to put those in the chat and I will update the uh, ballot before I open it up for voting. Um, so part of our bylaws is that you know we call for nominations on the floor in addition to the nominating committee, the visit, the the people that the nominating committee has put forward. So um, we want to you know honor that uh, that bylaw. So if you have um, nominations on the floor, put them in the chat, or um, like I said, text it to uh, Christopher. Or I. Okay. And CT, you forgot uh, to thank Tim Buckley, who has also served as <laughs> trustee. Yes. How could I forget? Um, yeah, Tim served as uh, interim secretary for a little while, and also I knew I was forgetting someone, but he wasn't in the panelist list, so I couldn't remember. But yeah, um, Tim served on several subcommittees, uh, including governance, and um, really, you know, been an integral part of the board as well as you know just keeping our church running. Um, so, yes, apologies, Tim, for uh, forgetting to thank you, but. We definitely do. Okay, um, wanted to dig into kind of just a, a check in on our budget, um, and sort of a, as a reminder, you know, we have a three hundred and sixty-one thousand uh, dollars operating budget this year um, that we approved in December, and um, the. Um, so it's basically no different. And then, so year to date, uh, we are 33% through the year. Um, we're 34% of the year in income and 32% of expenses. So that's about, you know, that's the right, uh, kind of, we're, we're ahead on income and behind on expenses, which is great. Um, you know, from overall, um, we haven't seen a, a significant drop off in in um, pledge income, which is really good. You know, we thank you all for continuing to fulfill your pledges and, and let us know if you know something if you're not able to. Um, we have seen uh, a drop off in the rental income between um, summer uh, summer camps and spring uh, concerts and things like that. So the you know our our long term interests here me. True Jesus Church um, and uh, the STEM school have have continued with their their rentals, um, but are kind of ad hoc, um, you know, dance recitals, piano recitals, that sort of thing have have gone away. Um, so we are making some changes. And um, Rachel, do you want to kind of talk through? Um, she kind of headed up a task force to kind of put together a, a working budget for these. Um, these COVID times. So if you wanted to talk through it, Rachel. Hi, everyone. So yeah, so um, CT kind of summarized it from a high level. Our income is basically two big pieces. It is pledge income and rental income. Right now, it's looking like our pledge income is staying fairly steady. We, we are seeing a little bit of loss because Obviously, some people are impacted um, by the COVID issues enough that they had to change their pledges. But from a basic standpoint, it looks like we're fairly level there. The, the largest um, impact is the rentals. And um, right now, we're just estimating what we think that impact will be. Obviously, none of us really have a crystal ball, so we don't really know how long this will last when people will start start renting again. So um, we took what we thought was a fairly conservative um, estimate, not really counting on any rentals for the summertime, hoping though that in the fall, we'll start getting those back. Um, as far as the expense side goes, uh, we did a, a kind of a 
relook at all of our expenses. And the, um, the savings is uh, pretty good. We, we um, looked at things like utilities that obviously would be lower because we're not using our facilities. Um, we're saving some there. Um, we're also just saving some in, in the you know day-to-day -day materials, office supplies, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also uh, looked at various other things that we thought we could save on. And so we, we went through all the line items. Um, and then if you look at the bottom, of course, that's the income versus expense estimate from a, a new COVID budget. Um, it looks like we're running below about $10,000. Um, right now, we feel like that's a, still a fairly stable position. We do have some cash reserves, and so um, that uh, helps us there. Um, but the other thing I, I just wanted to point out is we also uh, applied and received a loan through the CARES Act, which is the government um, uh, act that was passed um, about a month ago to help people, um, especially small businesses, get through this crisis. And so we're very lucky that we were able to uh, receive that loan. It is a loan, but the thing is, is if you spend the money within two and a half months on salary and utilities, um, if you spend that in, actually it's in an eight week period, then the amount that you spend of that loan is forgivable. So theoretically, if we spend all 38,500, we do not have to pay any back and that will significantly help our bottom line. So we're pretty excited, excited about that and I'll be working with the incoming board on making sure that we, you have to do a lot of, of uh, enough record keeping to prove that you've paid it out on the right things and, uh, submit that and then it will be forgiven. So I'll be working with them on that. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, and I'll say that that took a whole lot of work um, from Rachel, you know, hours I'm sure spent on on hold uh, with banks. And we had to go through two or three different banks before we found one that would, would accept our application. Um, and it, as well as working with John Durbin and, um, and Diane, uh, our administrator. So lots of work there and thank you, Rachel, for, for doing that. Absolutely. So we don't have the money in hand yet, um, to my knowledge. So we aren't accounting for that until we actually <laughs> receive the check, um, and then we'll do you know a budget you know analysis or, or adjustment or whatever. Um, okay. All right. Any questions on that from the kind of the Q and A? I don't see anything. Um, capital fund committee. So just wanted to kind of check in on our capital fund projects and where we stand, um, where we stand there. So 2019 projects, um, we repainted our uh, exterior fascia and, and metalwork. And we put in a welcoming bench uh, for people as they're on the horizon up front. Um, we installed this beautiful sign to connect with the neighborhood and kind of spread our message a bit um, with our neighbors and um, make people feel welcome. And, and this is a before picture, obviously, uh, on the right. So um, our 2020 priorities, um, kind of to check in on, on what we voted on here, um, we had a set of, kind of the last set of HVAC replacements uh, we replaced some water fountains, um, did our interior fire doors. I'll have some pictures of that in a second. We moved um, the nursery and pre-K, we really prepared to move 109 and 111 to move our nursery rooms and pre-K rooms into those rooms uh, to make way for the elevator work. And we did a lot of elevator kind of architecture planning, engineering, that sort of thing. Um, so just some pictures of the projects. So this is the air handler for the sanctuary in the narthex. Um, uh, new, you know, air handlers there. So basically on the on the ACs, we've replaced all the ACs in the building except for the two that drive the fellowship hall. And those are the newest ones. And 
to think in there is whenever they go, um, whenever they fail, one can cover the space of the other one. Um, so they're not as high priority to, to fix them the second. Um, but all the ones that would require like, you know, our, uh, us to be inconvenienced or renters to be inconvenienced when they were, when they went out are replaced and, and all, all good. Um, this picture is the new floor and paint in uh, 109, I believe. Um, so both 109 and 111 have this uh, new resilient flooring and um, paint, baseboards, all that kind of stuff. So they're ready to receive nursery and UK rooms whenever you move those. And in the meantime, you know, they're useful for adult RE and stuff um, or meetings. Um, so this is a big project that we we undertook. So previously, our doors had this um, kind of metal bar in the middle, um, and you know we, oops, um, we kind of had to squeeze through. If there were many people, we couldn't keep them open. You see these fire door keep closed signs um, because they were fire doors for you know trying to trap fire in one area from getting to another. So it took um, a fair amount of engineering and we worked with Gary, our architect, um, on a design that would eliminate that middle section. So now that's the same door is open and welcoming, very a lot more accessible without that middle bar in between. And um, it has an electronic hold open um, capability so that's tied in with our alarm system, so it meets fire code. Um, so if there's a, a fire alarm, you know, fire detected in the building, the doors automatically close and, and shut. Um, we also had to install new kind of crash bars and hardware a top patching system on the doors. So we redid three doors in the building. So this is these are the downstairs ones, and um, between the hallway leading to the fellowship hall and the hallway between the narthex and fellowship hall. And then also upstairs between the two hallways. Um, so much, definitely an improvement there. Um, doors. Um, also projects that are a little less um, maybe exciting, but nonetheless worthwhile. We replaced the domain um, shutoff for the building uh, so that we didn't have a you know, tens of thousands of dollar bill if the city shutoff went, went bad. Um, uh, it's been rusted off for years and just ignored. So we got that replaced, replaced some leaking faucets outside. And all but one of our, I think, six um, water fountains were out of water. Um, and so we replaced the um, water fountains with uh, this one downstairs has a, a bottle filler, um, which you can see Henley demoing here. Uh, so that's a big improvement to get those replaced. That's capital fund at work. So current financial status. <clears throat> Again, the, the pledge through 2020, or the pledges were asked through 2021, um, total of $730,000. The planned pledge through 2020, as people said, you know, I'm going to give money in these increments, was 669. Currently, we've collected 426000 um, so, you know, thank you very much for your capital fund um, pledges. And we've spent 240000 on the projects I just mentioned, plus the uh, consultant. Um, the majority of that's been on um, the air, air, air conditioners. And then the current balance as we stand of 258000 through the end of April. Um, so the remaining amount pledged uh, 65,000 in 2021 and 190 total in 2020. So uh, where's the elevator? So we kind of think of these things in these uh, five phases. So planning and preparation are complete. So we have um, the um, kind of the all the plans and the architecture and that sort of thing um, drawn out. Um, we are prepared in that we've moved, we've prepared the classrooms to move to kind of make way for the elevator. 
um, we're basically in the funding phase. So down below here, we have some kind of financial, um, kind of rough financial estimates. So we are estimating the working estimate of the construction and um, machinery and all that stuff, 250,000. Um, that's a conservative estimate. So, you know, we obviously hope it comes in below that, but working estimate, um, since we haven't gone out for bids or things like that, um, is 250K. The target reserve amount, which is 20% of the overall um, capital fund campaign, is 133. So you have those together, and our target fund amount before we can vote on elevator funding is 380K in the capital fund. Um, if you remember, we're sitting at 258. So uh, once we finish the funding phase and we have enough money, then we'll permit. Um, and these permits expire, so we're waiting on that until we're, we have the money and then start construction. So our, 20, our 2020 priorities for the elevator is really applying for grants. Um, so we want, you know, we obviously want the rest of the pledges to come in. And if we, everyone fulfills their pledge, then we will have enough money. But we would be remiss if we didn't try to go for grants for, um, you know, for this effort. Uh, there's a lot of organizations that have, that, um, you know, want to promote accessibility. Um, we, we have the, the matching funds, you know, they, they don't want to just pay for your project, um, but they're willing to kind of help put in that, that additional, um, last 20% or whatever um, to get you over the hump. So we feel like now's a good time to start applying for grants. Um, and we really need a team to do that. You know, we have a capital fund committee that's a few people, um, but you know, we're, we're uh, calling for, for people to, someone to help organize um, the team and track submissions and grants, kind of the status thing. Um, and then several people to help submit the applications. So we'll put together a packet with all the documentation resources available to help you, you know, with additional resources if you need. Um, so it's not like you're going to have to go collect, but really the legwork to to submit the applications, answer the questions, that sort of thing, um, is a really uh, essential uh, thing that we need we need volunteers for. Um, and on the uh, on the voting Google form um, thing, there's this thing that you can say if you're um, willing to help with the you know, submitting grants. Um, in addition to the grants, the second half of the year here, our parking lot um, is due for resurfacing and striping and patching some some places. Uh, we've got a quote from the same people who did it last time that did a good job. Um, it's just something that we have to do every so often. Um, and we thought now with it being, I mean, it, it's due for the resurfacing anyway, but now with a lot less traffic, it'd be a great time to take care of this. So we're also asking for a vote for um, funding $8,000 worth of parking lot replacement from the capital replacement um, kind of fund. Um, and that'll be complete um, later this you know, Summer. Okay, and once again, you know, thank you for your your capital fund pledges and and fulfillment, and you know, we we thank you for your investment in Live Oak's future. You've done some great work this year. Okay, um, I want to kind of hand it over to Reverend Joanna and talk through what we are thinking and um, what our kind of current. Uh, thinking is around, you know, returning to in-person church or, or not, and timelines and that sort of thing. Hi, everybody. Um, let me start by saying this. I miss y'all so much, and I know everyone misses physically being together. Last Sunday, even before I knew that Zoom was going to have the tech problems that it did last week, I, I woke up and just the heaviness of not being able to see people, not being able to go into church, it was just like an elephant was on my chest. So I get that. And the goal is that when we get together, that, there, um, that we all get to get together, that there are no permanently empty seats. 
Um, so we had to look at some, some um, the facts as of we know them right now, and of course that can change month to month. Um, but the, the scientists right now are looking at how this virus is spread. And if you wanted to create something where the worst thing to do um, was go to church, unfortunately, it would be this, this virus. Um, they can tell that one of the worst things to do is sing. Uh, singing, singers are called super spreaders in terms of how they pass this on. Um, I would assume for those of us who preach or speak, um, you know, with projection, that we would fall into that, things like laughing. And so we had to look at, okay, if we did gather for worship, um, what would that, in order to be even slightly safe, what would that entail? And that would mean things like every family would have to be six foot um, away from every other family. And so then you have, it's not just the sitting, it's the things like, well, then how do you get down the hall? Uh, the scientists have talked about what, um, what a problem bathrooms are because the air is so limited. And so it would have to be something like one person could go in at a time and then you'd need like five or 10 minutes between each person. Well, how are you gonna monitor that? We would all need to be in face masks. There would be um, uh, no, no hugging, no shaking hands. And so for me, when I, when I got that picture in my head of all of us where we couldn't hold, we, we couldn't sing, we couldn't see each other's smiles, um, we couldn't hug. And then I thought of online worship. I can't make a worship service with all of those limitations that can even half compete with a well done online worship service. And so um, at that point, for me, it became, okay, what if we accept what the scientists know right now and assume that for worship, we will not be gathering together um, for another year. And the, the way that we're doing online church, I think we're doing it well, but it was put together in one week. Now, how are there some things that we could do that would make it even better if we assumed we're gonna be doing this for, for a while? And so um, that's what I've proposed to the board is that for our large gatherings at this point, that we operate on an assumption that we're gonna be doing it this way for a year. And let's try and figure out the absolute best way that we can do that. Um, and I will tell you, it took, um, I'm so proud of the staff. It took us seven days um, from being in the building to be able to present online worship services it'll take us seven minutes to be able to go back the other way. So don't, don't feel in any way that this inhibits us. Uh, now there's gonna be some other things that um, as time goes along that we may be able to adjust. Um, perhaps we will be able to meet in small groups, uh, especially outside. Um, perhaps in our local area, the numbers will begin going down so that we can start considering those things. And we're going to be doing that um, constantly. But, but right now, there, there does become this thing of where do we put our energy? And right now, the numbers are only going up. And so let's spend our time and our energy on something that is productive, which is figuring out how to do church in as safe and loving and fulfilling a way as possible. Um, and I will say, I am like, I'm, I, I'm reading all the science stuff daily and there will be no one who will be more excited um, if we can jump and make a change um, faster than we're expecting, um, than me. Um, I'm gonna be right there. And uh, let's see. Wanted to see, if, were, were there any specific questions about this? Um, and if you click on the q and A, I I think that that will, um, that's a really clear way to give us any questions. I don't see any uh, open questions. Um, 
trying to keep up with the chat, but it's a uh, it's a challenge. So, if um, anyone else wants to jump in, with any questions in the chat, that'd be great. Okay, and I will hand it back over to you, uh, CT. All right. Okay, so um, our engagement survey. So this is something we want to do annually. We ran one last year and had good results. Um, this is basically a way for the uh, leadership of the church to just kind of t have a sense of how well people are engaged and um, feeling about about their membership of the church or, or engagement there. So um, we also want to use it as a way to update our directory, update contact information, that sort of thing. It's real quick, takes just a few minutes, and we post it at liveoku.org slash survey. Um, there's also a link uh, at the end of the congregational meeting ballot, and um, I believe on the, on the meeting page itself. So um, just, if you will, take a few minutes, and we, we tailored this year's to, to be um, kind of online, you know, to, to be sensitive to the times that we're in and to measure engagement, you know, online. Um, so if we'll complete that and we'll share the results um, in the December congregational meeting um, as well as probably online before that. All right. Um, so how are we going to vote? Um, we're going to take, uh, we're not trying to, you know, count votes in the chat or anything like that. Um, we want this to be accessible to people who couldn't be here, you know, live. Um, so we're gonna have an online voting system where you um, you complete a online form, a Google form. It works on your mobile device, works on your, on your computer. Um, so it's, it should be fully accessible. Um, you go to liveoku.org slash meeting, and there's a big button that says uh, now. Um, I'll enable the voting in just a minute here. Um, you have until midnight Tuesday to submit your vote. Um, and if you'd rather give your proxy to someone else, uh, there's also a proxy form there. But be sure they know that you gave it to them um, when they submit their vote. Okay. If you have problems and you really just can't figure out the voting, um, Christopher's volunteered to, to be kind of a, a last resort. Um, you can call or text him and at 512-522-1157, and he'll record the vote for you. Um, the, it should be pretty straightforward with just filling out, you know, your email address, name, number of proxies, you know, who you're voting for, um, and then the things I mentioned with the capital campaign project and the elevator grants. And then there's a, um, if you have any kind of questions or comments, uh, there's a place that you can enter those as well. So we're now live with collecting responses. This is liveoq.org slash meeting. And down under voting, you click vote now. You just fill out the Um, any questions there? And I did add, oh, uh, I'll say it verbally now. So um, Becky McPherson graciously offered to um, serve as the nominating committee um, TB. So I changed that in the form. And um, if I missed anything, then there's, there's a write-in here as well. But thank you, Becky, for, for stepping up here last minute. So thank you all very much um, for sticking with us and for um, for attending the congregational meeting. You know, in this uh, these circumstances, this might be the fastest one we've ever done. Uh, I think 35, 40 minutes. Um, but if there's any questions, we can. Um, oh yeah, Christopher says that we are determining quorum by the number of votes, um, not by the meeting participants. We need at least 50 votes to make quorum. So. Please do, you know, don't, don't feel like your job is done when you, when this webinar is over, but, um, uh, you know, go ahead and, and submit, submit your vote. 
again, liveoq.org slash meeting. Um, CT, Tegan had a great question, which was, are Giles and Darius running against each other? No. Why does it look like that? No, it doesn't. So she just, um, so to clarify, there are three trustee positions. And one of them is Linda, who is continuing on. And the other two trustee positions um, were filled by Tim and I for the previous two years. And we are not going to any further. So, um, so no, Darius and Giles are not running against each other. Those are two separate trustee positions. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and I did also want to comment that, you know, we have some, some newer members who are, um, you know, volunteering and serving on the board this year. I'm really excited about that. Uh, it's really good to have, you know, fresh ideas and, and takes on things. Uh, okay. Uh, any other comments or questions from the, from the chat, y'all? CT, I've been trying to keep track. I don't see anything else. All right. Well, we'll post the recording to this on the meeting uh, page as well, so that if people couldn't make this, then they can, uh, you know, build, um, get the full experience. And, um, you know, just remember to go and vote and uh, fill out the survey as well. Um, Reverend Joe, you want to close us out with closing words? You bet. And a thank you uh, to Rachel Sarton again for serving as president during a tenure that um, had some, some surprises, some things you definitely did not plan on. Uh, this is by Amy Zucker Morgan Stern. Never has it been more true than now. We extinguish this flame, but the sparks within us remain alight. From each of us in our supposed solitude, the signals buzz and hum, sparkling through space one to another, connecting us invisibly but palpably. We are one, and from every window, our light shines. Go in peace. Thank you all.